Joe presents Baz and Andrew's House of Rugby, together with Guinness. Hello and you're welcome to Baz and Andrew's House of Rugby, your brand new rugby show brought to you weekly live from Dublin. I am Barry Murphy. This I'm is Andrew, Andrew Trimble. Trimble. Party on, Baz. Party on. Trimble. You're about to go Wayne? <laughs> 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 You're about to go Wayne? Garth, Garth. Yeah. I'm Wayne, man. I know, sorry. Yeah, 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 no, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. I'm playing second fiddle, aren't I? Ah, look. He has his place, you know. Oh, that's he so does. patronizing. <laughs> You're important too. Look, my name is first on the, on the, on the, the show, you know, man. Yeah, but that's because initially they were going to go Baz and Trimbies, and I thought they were going alphabetical. <laughs> but now I'm starting to think that was just an excuse. To yeah. make my name second, regardless. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway. So yeah, going on that, what we're going to call you, Andrew? That's fine. Whatever. Call me whatever you want. Okay, because we've got like a few options. Trimby, Trimbo, Trim. <laughs> the lesser known Trimbo. Trimbo. <laughs> Trimba. <laughs> uh, David Trimbo. I've got called David before. Yeah. yeah Lord, times. Lord David Trimbo. Yeah, you can call me Lord if you want. Lord David. Uh, what was the other one? I had a good one. Uh, Trimble the long armed. Uh, it's it's probably a lot a little bit He's long. Very long arms. What about Andrew Trimble? Are your hands as long as your arms, or is it just like my hands aren't as long as my arms? <laughs> <laughs> are they, I, what you meant was uh, are they in proportion, proportion with my long arms? Yeah, they kind of are, aren't they? They're. I think they're. They're quite. Long. They're accurate. They're quite long. They're accurate. Um, like Barry, you also have <laughs> quite long arms. <laughs> <laughs> Not as freakishly long as yours. No, mine, mine. I've grown into my arms. Yeah. I think uh, whenever um, initially my arms started getting noticed for being, you know, longer than it's necessary. So whenever I was maybe eighty kilos, a little bit skinnier, and that was sort of exaggerated a little bit. Okay. But they came in handy. It was a good job for for having long arms. Yeah. Trimble the long arm. Uh -huh. We'll go with. Or, no, do you know what, Lord... It's not punchy, it's not Lord quite punchy David, enough. Lord David Trimble, my dad rang me the other day actually to say that uh, <coughs> we had played together, believe it or not, he was like, do you know yourself and uh, and David Trimble played together uh, in Cold Rain under 10s in 1992 and then in, uh, in the Pat Lawler in Limerick in 1992. And I was like, David Trimble. <laughs> he said, yeah, I was like, do you, don't you mean... Lord David Trimble. <laughs> He's like, yes, Lord, yes, sorry, Lord. of course. So uh, he will now refer to you as Lord Trimble all the time. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know your dad to, to kind of know how accurate that impression of him was. It's very. Yeah, he talks out of the side of his mouth like that, like, like he's whispering about a, a someone. Bell's palsy. I don't know your dad. Yeah, well, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, think he, uh, I, I think he may have met you back then. You obviously made a huge impression on him back then. Well, uh, not really. He got my name. Got my name wrong. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, yeah. Well, he gets everyone's name wrong. Yeah, but we go back even further. Though we played at the Korean uh, tournament as well. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Under tens, when uh, that was the kind of the done thing back then. You'd go up for a weekend, and it was an excuse for the parents to take their kids away and go on the pitch for three days, basically. Yeah. And you'd offload the child yeah. into a fellow teammate's uh, or opposition team's house for the weekend. Yeah, no health and safety in those <coughs> days. No. No um, police checks. No. Go on, you be grand. <laughs> you be grand. Give us a couple of days here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Up on the train and the parents would be in the front carriage on the lash and we'd be down the back <laughs> playing cards as nine-year-olds. The good old days. The good old days, yeah. Yeah, yeah so that's as, uh, that's as far back as, as we go now. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. And now, um, obviously, we're both retired. We're doing our own things and you're, um, you know, a cool dude in a band nowadays, aren't you? I, I do my best, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, uh, so I, you in the band, you've kind of got that, um, you've got that balance between, you know, you're kind of, you've got the rugby background, so you're kind of straight laced, you know, but you've got that alt kind of groomed beard and nose ring. Groomed? Yeah, it's, it's manscaped. Wild, it's man. manscaped. It's wild. <laughs> I'd say you're halfway between <laughs> Michael Bublé and Amy Winehouse. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll take that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A beautiful voice like uh, Buble, but uh, yeah, a bit wild maybe like yeah. Amy Winehouse. Yeah, I'll take w that. wild but within reason. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah, wild yeah. but not silly. <laughs> 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 I'll take it. Is yeah. that all you're giving me? Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah you also. That's um, my intro. Yeah, have you introed me? <laughs> I was just about to. You've man. also played for Monster for a while. I did a few times. Yeah. that was years ago. Whereas you've played. 303 times for Ulster and <laughs> Ireland combined. Two World Cups, Celtic League and Six Nations. 
Irish Player of the Year 2014. That's pretty class now, I'll give you that. Memorised, was that memorised? Uh, yeah, it's kind of written here in front of me. I was told yeah. to say it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing my bit. But um, I believe by 2014, most of the best players had retired at that point. So, uh -huh. like, that's probably one of the reasons. Yeah, why fair enough. Why you got that, right? And you fair were kind of, you were on the way out. And they were like, just give it to him. Give sure. it to him, go on, I'll get rid of him. And you were also in the team that beat the All Blacks, which... That's pretty special. So yeah, you're you're allowed to talk shite about rugby. I'll give you that. You've <laughs> you've your credentials check out. So uh, begin. Tell us. Okay. <laughs> what of rugby? Okay. Well, we talk. Well, we get straight into the Leinster game, will we? Yeah. Well, we're gonna. What are we gonna cover today? We're gonna cover uh, Leinster, Munster, and Ulster. We're gonna talk about. Um, uh, oh, first of all, we're gonna talk about uh, Freddie Burns dropping the ball oh, over the line. Yeah, that was. Yeah, that was glorious. I know, wasn't it? It, it was a real balance between glorious hilarity and that poor fella. I swear that is miserable. Good, yeah, that's Isn't good. Because a lot of people, I <coughs> saw some people on. Like I think Jeremy Guskett went to town on him. Like, yeah. what an That's idiot! Mean. That I is mean, like, isn't leave it? Leave it out, man. Who? Like, yeah. What, you know, who do you think you are? We've all done stupid things, and yeah, I would prefer to see the funny side and the feel sorry. Like we were texting each other on Saturday, and I was like. This is so funny, my God. But then I was like, I saw his tweet and I was there, yeah. oh, and I tweeted him. I was like, fair, not that he knows who I am, but I was like, fair oh, play. You him? Yeah, I was like, oh, geez, fair funny. play. See, that's the Michael Bublé in you. That's the nice guy. Yes. <laughs> Amy Winehouse wouldn't have tweeted him. But then Amy Winehouse came right back in and she was like, well, he kissed. He <laughs> blew a kiss. Like, yeah. who blew all the kiss when they're going over the, the try line? I yeah. just thought that was outrageous. Like, um, <coughs> So I think we've got some audio of that. Clip, have we of it? Of the kiss. Of the kiss. Through this time, oh, there it is. Freddie Burns, a kiss and a score. Ooh. Oh, he's dropped oh, it. Oh, no. oh, he's kissed and dropped it. What has he done? He's celebrating, he's smiling, he's kissing. Medar is there. Oh, that's great work from Medar. Brilliant but work. I don't care who you support, that is brutal. Save the celebrations for after. He's screaming into the ground, open up, open up, let me in. It's so tough. <clears throat> Did you see his mate? Uh, I don't know who it was, his teammate yeah, slapped him on the back. <laughs> yeah, <a> biggie. <laughs> he, he didn't need that. It was the equivalent of kicking him up the hole, wasn't yeah. it? Like, yeah. God. I yeah, I watched tough. The Simpsons yesterday. I was just sitting at home in my dressing gown and The Simpsons episode came on. And it was the one where Homer, uh, there was a nuclear meltdown in the nuclear plant and Homer uh, uh, saves everyone by pressing a button and they put him up as a hero and stuff and then it happens again and uh, they're like Homer it's gonna happen again what do you do and he just goes like eeny meeny miny mo catch a tiger by the toe and he presses a button and he and they they then he saves them and they're like this is what you did you idiot so they're like they praise him as being an idiot who actually it works out okay for him yeah and I was like this is kind of like Freddie Burns so it was obviously idiotic, but I think so many people are kind of going, ah, fair play to you though. You know, you're great that he could end up being like, you know, a cult hero because of this. I'm yeah. going to certainly watch him. You should have tweeted him the link, the Homer Simpson link. Yeah, because remember Homer goes into the dictionary, they put his face in the dictionary. I haven't seen that episode. So they could put a Freddie Burns in the dictionary, maybe yeah. we could, we could yeah. edit that in. That would have cheered him up. Yeah. You know, listen, it's obviously, you, you know, you got beat in European Cup, you've let down loads of supporters, loads of... Players are giving you a hard time, but listen, Homer bounced back from this, so yeah, you, you should be grand. We should call it, it could be called. I did a, he did a Freddie Burns. Yeah, you know, but it yeah. could it could ultimately be positive. I've, uh, thing. I've dropped the ball over the line. Mm -hmm. How? Yeah, um, might have been. We celebrate like no, geez, no, I wasn't kissing. Okay, I wasn't kissing the badge or nothing like that. I uh, it was a way to Aroni, the old zebra. On the blue or on the red button, whatever it was, <laughs> the alternate, whatever, yeah. on Sky. <coughs> and Thank God. I know. Yeah. It got no exposure. Or like, I don't even know if it, there was a TMO with the game. There wasn't, like, it was one of these games that just went on behind closed right, doors. Okay. Kinda, and I was never so thankful. Uh, so I would run, I run, run over, no one anywhere near me, and I just went to put the ball down with one hand and not knocked it out of my hand with my knee. It was, it, was, it was my long arms weren't long enough, Barry. Oh my God, yeah. the irony of that. Yeah. You got cocky, you were like, 
my arm is long enough yeah. that I can just sweep the ball yeah. across the floor. My arms here. are perfectly designed for occasions <laughs> like this. I don't need to bend these legs. <laughs> yeah. to sweep my what do you need across. knees for <laughs> when you got arms like this? <laughs> so knocked it on, knocked it on, and then kind of went down in a, in a bit of a heap. Oh, but no. um, but my f- the physio was right there. And I, I, was, I was sort of sitting on my knees and I was just, I had my head kind of in my hands a little bit for a moment. And uh, Gigi, the physio, came over and he said, uh, Trim, is everything okay? You all right? What's, what's up? What's up? And I was there. It's, this is just 100% embarrassment. There's no injury. <laughs> <laughs> unless, you've got, unless you've got something for embarrassment, then go away. <laughs> so well, you've got 303 caps for Ulster. You've uh, you scored. So he should have been, he should have given him a script, man. Good yeah, timing. Yeah. Good timing. <laughs> yeah. Big you up all the time. Yeah. Uh, do you remember Will Carling's one? Did you ever see that? No. I think that was the greatest. I was thinking three ones, other ones last night, and Will, mm. I didn't even think of them. Check it out on YouTube. It's unbelievable. He runs over the dead ball line and he's just kind of strolling and he tries to get closer to underneath the posts and yeah. he kind of steps inside. I think he's, he's playing with the Harlequins. I can't remember who he's playing against. And whoever he, he tries to step inside, he's now he's good bit over the try line. Like yeah. He's just taking it easy. And whoever catches him right underneath both his arms and kind of lifts him up. Oh yes, and I've then seen that one. And both yes. his legs are off the ground. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. touch it down. <laughs> but the ball is about six inches off the ground and your man just carries him out over the pit. Yes, I have seen that so one. Yeah. It was so perfect. Um, Le Guizamon, <coughs> uh, the Argentinian back road at London Irish, dropped the ball of the line and he, he was fully showboating. His wasn't. His was way worse than Freddie Burns. Really? Not. No, it wasn't as high a profile game, and it wasn't like a, a, a try to win the game. <laughs> but it was worse. Definitely worse. What was and it, dancing or he was just he was doing a, like a big swan dive or swallow dive. Oh yeah. Uh, Chris Ashton. Yeah. We're all hoping it happens to Chris Ashton at some stage. Yeah, or not. yeah. It hasn't. Um, did Dominici do that as well? The French winger. I can't remember. I think he might have. I think he might have done it again uh, for France in the Six Nations and and. I think he knocked it on over the line, and then the worst thing about it was it went to his reaction, and it did a slow mo of the like the horse lips. <laughs> 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 I, th- I hope I'm uh, remembering this correctly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Perfect response for something like that. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, it was great. It was, what a action-packed weekend! Like having that, and then I suppose the rugby was pretty good as well. Yeah. Uh, Leinster taking the pace at this stage, I suppose. Um, Ridiculous, yeah, aren't wasn't they? it? Yeah, it was just always going that way. They just even even though it was tight up until thirty eight minutes, you could just tell physically they were getting on top of them. They were just challenging them in all areas. Was didn't have much of the ball, and you're just going, "This is only a matter of time." I'm surprised they hung in there that long. Mm-hmm. Then the Sopoanga yellow card. Then Leinster went right. Not mucking about here. Let's put this game out of sight. Yeah, uh, I think that was such a clinical moment because like. Most teams would have probably just put that ball out of the pitch, out of the off the field at forty minutes and gone in at half time. Yeah. With a decent first half, you know, having been up against the wind, but they take a quick <coughs> tap in the twenty-two, yeah. and then Subwanga gets penalised, yellow card, and then McGrath's try directly after that was just like the intent to play and s- and go through phases with different options, like Sexton added and having someone on his inside, pick and goes. Uh, McGrath having a dart, having the usual sex and loop play, yeah. uh, some hard runners. They literally had any variety of play you could think of was in that 14 phases or 15 phases, whatever it was. And then yeah, to, to kind of na- like it's always a good one to kind of a little nail in the coffin or, or something just before half time, yeah, like, yeah, or just put your stall out or whatever. Yeah, um, <coughs> with a bullet tag burning a bit of art. <laughs> <laughs> Tag furlong in a bit of space as well. Oh, that was insane. Ridiculous. They're, he's showing off, isn't he? Yeah. He's showing off. <coughs> it's not right. It's not right. Yeah, I, t- I tweeted about it and then Niall Ronan, former Munster fullback, or way forward, who's a, a massive uh, GA fan and who was a big footballer, Gaelic footballer, he just tweeted back saying that's Tig's footballing skills there. Like, yeah. he was a, yeah, I think he was a big Gaelic footballer, which is clear. Like, the footwork, the vision, the speed. Yeah. <coughs> But it shows, I suppose, where Leinster are at that they can, they can, they've got all across the pitch, they've got players that can play like that. Yeah, and it's frightening to kind of imagine how good this Leinster side could be potentially and how they're just head and shoulders better than anybody else in the competition. 
Saracens were, were okay. They did like a good job up in Glasgow, not an easy place to go, but just I still think no one's anywhere near uh, Leinster at the minute. Yeah, and it's like for Joe Schmidt as well, like he's not gonna, <coughs> how can he ignore anyone that was on the pitch the other yeah, night? You yeah. know, going into these uh, November internationals and the World Cup, like, you know, they'd we had such a bolter when James Ryan last year and how much he came on in 12 months. And you know, you, you got Conan this year, Van der Fleer and, uh, even Ruddock the other night, the three of them in the back row, unbelievable. Luke McGrath, <coughs> Ring Rose, Larmer, like, where does it end? Um, I, wish, I, wish, I wish they were less likeable as well. Like, back, you know, like, like yeah. the Leinster, Leinster brand. <laughs> I'm going, oh, those guys. Yeah. But they're all good lads. Yeah, That's yeah. The thing. That's the annoying thing. And even uh, Sexto, uh, uh, before the game, might have been mid midweek, he was interviewed and he was talking about, you know, last time Wasps were here, they put. 35 points on us or something and you're going oh that's so annoying how, how, <laughs> yeah, yeah. how humble he is yeah, yeah. Uh, I want him to be cocky and arrogant like the Leinster way but yeah. he's humble then after the game Leo Collins going uh, no, yeah you can't win the European Cup in the first week you know you just gotta you know he's just playing it down yeah. playing it down but they that's must the way to do it. they must know how good they are yeah but they, they don't really <coughs> like they don't take the foot off the pedal at the same time they don't yeah. you know they 88 minute, they're still, you know, Larmer's scoring like a brilliant try and how hard they were for that. But the last three tries, like Sexton putting the ball through his legs and um, James Ryan's carry for that for that try as well, like they're still up in the ante. They want to keep putting scores on the board and, and they're still outworking every team, you know, even in the 70 odd minutes. So yeah. um, James Lowe's James Lowe still sh uh, showing off, isn't he? Yeah, <laughs> he's taking the piss as well. I know. Um, yeah, I think uh, he was again immense the other night. Like the break for the tr for his try, like that try was ridiculous. Yeah. Like, and and uh, I know you've got a few issues with him. If you want to tell, <coughs> I do. Yeah, the peeps. Go on. No, I think when you're performing as well as James Lowe, you have to search quite quite hard to find issues with his performance. And one area that he's been extremely inaccurate in is his high fives. I think his some of his celebrations are really <laughs> poor. Yeah, really poor. It's just just terrible, terrible high fives. They're like you know what they're like Ryder Cup high fives. You yeah, know, like yeah, like nerds, like nerdy <laughs> golfers, <laughs> <laughs> old golfers like swinging a miss. And it, for for James Lowe, no, I actually he improved his performance at the so weekend. So the inaccuracy is your problem. I, I think so. Yeah, and to be fair, when you're scoring <coughs> as many tries as James Lowe is, or making as many assists, <coughs> you need to sort that out. Because you're going to be giving a lot of high fives. You're yeah. going to be doing a lot of celebrating. Well, yeah. I noticed it that it, when you <coughs> said it, I was like, I went back and I watched the monster match, and I and I said, and I was looking, focusing mostly on his high fives. And I think he starts, he started looking at himself in the screen, yeah. the big screen. <laughs> so then he, that's when they became extra inaccurate because he was just swatting. Yeah. And he was just looking at himself, but like you got to focus yeah. on the hand. You like, got to concentrate. You know when you hit that proper clap, like it's yeah. when you look at the other person's hand. Yeah. Or their elbow or something like that. I can remember thinking about this before. But yeah, Joe Schmidt will watch that back and he'll say, like, next yeah. play, once you score the try, then you get get yourself worried about the, the celebration. Yeah. Celebrate correctly, because yeah. otherwise it's a waste, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. But yeah. it's just a numbers game with him. He's just swinging left, <laughs> right and centre. And listen, the odd one's landing, but yeah. from someone of his quality, he needs to be landing a higher percentage of high fives. Okay, well, we'll, I think that's something <coughs> we should uh, keep an eye on for the whole uh, series and the, the whole season is just... Yeah, exactly I wonder. If, I wonder if we've got carried away here. I, did, I wonder if. Um, but he's a character. I think you know that. That's like I think. Did you see his interview after the game yeah, the other day? Yeah. Where he uh, had a bit of a mishap the night before the match, which I kind of loved. That is, well, I didn't like that his car was broken into, but I liked his reaction where he wanted. Uh, yeah. Well, let's have a listen. My car got broken into last night. Man, I couldn't bloody believe it. What did you Living in the hut? Nah, they didn't take anything. Oh, oh man, I don't know what's going on. They broke the bloody smallest window and then just ran off. Little, mm. If you find them, tell me. <laughs> Police rang me yesterday. It was like we had a funny chat. I was like, man, if you do find them, give me 10 minutes. Or <laughs> you know, he just. There you go. Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, that's, that's it. That's, that's the kind of guy he is. Yeah, so he's. Uh, Lawless. Yeah, he is. He's yeah. Yeah. He's a rascal, isn't lawless he? Lawless by name, lawless yeah. by nature, lawless by yeah. name. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. If, if he gets in a room with whoever broke into his car, and he's swinging a few digs, I hope he's more accurate than yeah. he is with the high fives. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. The, the, the guy, if, the guy, if the guy knows him at all, yeah. he'll just go in there and stand. He'll be grand. Yeah. <laughs> stand there, I guess. Do your worst. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> well, anyone that knows James Lowe, pass that on to him. Uh, but anyway, we've, uh, we're Monster fans. We're going to come back uh, to you in a while. And we'll, uh, we'll go through the Exeter match and uh, everything that happened there. But now we've got an exclusive interview with Ronan Agara. Uh, exclusive by means he was here last week and he was talking to a lot of people but <laughs> <laughs> we, we were one of them uh, so yeah Roger's here with uh, Virgin Media doing some uh, media work last week and we were lucky enough to sit down and have a chat with him Roger great to see you you too Baz thanks for coming in appreciate it I've seen more of you in the last two weeks than I have in the last six years <laughs> yeah but and it's been great it has been yeah it's been an eye-opener for all of us but um yeah, I must say I missed you, and it's been um, an interesting few weeks. Yes, thanks, man. I, I, uh, I missed you too. I agree. Uh, for anyone watching and listening, we were in New York two weeks ago for uh, a monster reunion, is that what we call it? Slash fundraiser? Yeah, I think probably better to say fundraiser for the <laughs> players of tomorrow coming through as opposed yeah. to... We yourself, made a fortune. yourself and Wally were in New York. For a three day, I know um, you were pretty. Shindig close. would be you Shindig <laughs> would be the best way of describing it. But um, I was saying to Trimby earlier that it's like uh, it's like we're an old donkey sanctuary now, and they wheel us out every once in a while, and they get to just bring us around the country and try and make money for for Munster. And I was thinking they could potentially bring us to like electric picnic next year, and on a Sunday morning you come out and you can get to feed the claw and apple or ride Gollive around the place or uh, you know get to see Peter Stringer the amazing two foot rugby player and <laughs> stuff like that you know there uh, are a lot of freaks in our group yeah but but crack, goodness yeah well, I, I wonder about the audience do they all see it like the way we see <laughs> right, it you know yeah, I think yeah, even yeah. other rugby players are I think I said somewhere during the week though that um, I have massive appreciation though for having played with people you'll never play with against. There'll never be a Claw or Gallif in rugby again. It's yeah, just impossible. Yeah. And it's it, it's great to have um, memories like that. You know what I mean? Obviously Axel as well, different breed. Quinny, guys like that, is very, very different uh, to Pokey to an extent in that uh, monster group. But um, yeah, I think we always said, because when we were players, I can remember even discussing with fellas like uh, Trims and Tommy and uh, Johnny and Rico, you kind of be kind of going, those past players, they just kind of like talking about themselves. I hope we don't end up like that, but I think we're definitely <laughs> yeah. on the road. To yeah, I it's know. It's a different game in our <laughs> yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, I think uh, it would be fair to say you always had uh, a massive grow for the, f the 15 players within the four walls. That for me was a standout part of who you were, it was all about didn't matter fuck about anyone else but the 15 players that were that were you know on your team or yeah most know. definitely as a player when I saw that mm -hmm. now my coaching had on Baz I actually it's a it's a really interesting point um, because I was probably kingpin in uh, Munster in Ireland not being cocky for for mm -hmm. a long time so the role of number one is a very different role okay mm -hmm. but then I think you go to uh, Johnny coming into the team, me going out of the team, me coming in, going out. You're hanging in there because you're playing for a country because it's such a great buzz. But I kind of knew at that stage I wanted to go coaching. So then I was kind of looking at it, the value of numbers 16 to 23. But I think the real value of an environment or an organisation is numbers 23 to 32. So, for example, in the Crusaders, they're known as the Stars. Mm -hmm. So the Stars kind of prepped the first team for the game coming up at the weekend. But essentially... If they have value, respect, self-worth, encouragement, um, they will add so much to the potential starters. So the key in any organisation I find is these guys, because you would have a little bit of experience, but if you're a bib or as we'd say in Munster, a Muppet, mm -hmm. grand for a week, okay, but you got to imagine that for 26 weeks of the year. And if you're doing that for four years, which a lot of guys in our environment did, you, I think mm. you look upon them very differently. I just think the subs were used a lot less back then, obviously. Like yeah, they were. Were. they were. And, uh, uh, yeah, they there were. There weren't and impact no, substitutes. I remember watching the sale game recently in 2006, and there wasn't one substitution made until the 78th minute of that game. Yeah. So 15 players no, played you're, yeah, every you're minute, which was bizarre. Looking back, it's not even that long ago, Like whereas now you'd barely get past 
40 minutes or 50 minutes without changing two or three players in the team. Yeah. <coughs> no, I, I, that, that, that is a good point, I suppose. You're after hammering my first point there. But <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's just, it, was a different, it was a different era yeah, back then. I mean, there was... Uh, I and, I uh, and it was a different mentality of picking the team. Yeah, I think to be fair, like there was no such terms of finishers or impact players. Yeah, it was kind of get your best team out there, and if there's an injury, bollocks, there's someone coming in, but hopefully he'll be all right. Yeah, but like, was that because the graph players of weren't allowed Shrubby to develop? Is then or I think there was less. Uh, probably, um, I would say the depth was less too. To be fair, there's a better quality of depth in. In Irish rugby at the minute, there's yeah. more competition for places, and but that's all was going to happen. I think with a progression, you look at the graph. You know what I mean? Like the goal for Munster. Oh, fair enough, it's twenty years ago, but it was to keep it under fifty against Toulouse. Mm -hmm. Then it was kind of get out of your pool. Then it's kind of trying to get qualifying. Well, first win in France. Remember the celebrations for that? Yeah. It was kind of three day bender. In <laughs> <laughs> in yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, I think what's really interesting about nowadays is you guys coming into Leinster and Irish rugby and before them teams have won so their mentality is very different mm -hmm. I think that one of the uh, annoying aspects I have now having been finished is probably coming into a team without I wouldn't say without standards but without a kind of I suppose a defined culture so we didn't know our, what winning tasted like but I think that's a massive head start to the current group. They come into an environment and... Um, in the Munster team? No, they, sorry, in, in the, the Irish, the team, Irish as team as well. But yeah. the, I think the Munster aspect is a complete different discussion. I just wish if if, that, if this new group of players was able to park the history of Munster mm -hmm. and just forget about what has happened in the past because none of them have influenced it really. There's a f handful of guys like Earlsey that we've played with, but other than that, Connor to a certain extent. Yeah. Like Donna Ryan is gone. Peter O'Mahony was just about probably there, you know, so. But do they need to create their own history by having their own suffering like that you had back in 2000, 2003, and that, you know, by the time 2006 came around, you were just sick to death of yeah. of losing and, and you, you became the player you were by playing in those huge games every year and, you know, to a certain extent, they've done they've done that now. Like Peter Manny's played in six semi finals, or or as he's played in, in something similar. Yeah, like, I um, suppose too as well. I just it's a strange thing to say, but in some of those games, watching it as a neutral, obviously I'm a mad monster fan, but you kind of seem that they're overreaching. Yeah, not that's mean. not a great way to feel about it. Yeah. So I think there is a little bit of uh, depth missing in Munster, but. I would like to think their first team would challenge any team. I'm still pretty convinced with that. You put Connor and Chris into that backline, and I think yeah. it's a different backline. I agree, totally. Um, how did you find they played last weekend? Did you did you like the, the I think direction what's they're gone under the radar has been Munster will never be Leinster, and Leinster will be Munster vice versa. Okay, it's what happens is you have the syndrome of looking over your your fence at your neighbour who's doing better than you, and that's what Munster should not fall into the trap. It's a similar story in Crusaders when the All Blacks were so dominant they were looking at what can they take from the All Black camp and bring it back into the Crusade. What can they take from the Hurricanes and bring it back in. But there came a point when they kind of said well these are our strengths, these are our challenges, these are our threats or weaknesses. So we need to identify three things that we'll get better at. Kay. Because if you're always looking you're going to take your eye off the ball and yeah. sport at this level moves so quickly so what was really pleasing I think hasn't been appreciated enough is that the monster scrum and the driving mall it's just so powerful still in modern rugby the forwards win the game yeah I'm still convinced about that you where know. we scored yeah, the three tries yeah. the weekend yeah you know and both, I think yeah. um, you have to remember there's a 22 year old out half who probably everyone expects to, when he gets the ball that he's nearly like Messi now but like, I'd say, to, probably to take back expectation a little bit, maybe think what he'll be like in three years' time when he's 25 and he's nowhere near mature as an old half. Yeah, I was looking at it with my centre cap and winger cap at the weekend, looking at it and going, he did everything he could do, I thought. I thought he was, he was excellent, I thought he attacked the line. But I was like, the players outside him could have maybe 
offered a little bit more or yeah. ran better. Uh, and then you got to think about, as you look at the, the, it was a pretty rookie midfield. Yeah, sorry, it was. Connection, right. there's yeah. a, a nine yeah. playing second game in, in, in Ireland. Yeah. You know, so like he's the kind of senior halfback partner. So I think you'll see him hit a new Develop. level when yeah. Connor's there. Yeah. Because it's unfair of him to be asked to carry that mantle at this stage. He should be coming into a settled team, but it's not settled because of Farrell's injury, Tote's injury, mm. Scandal's a great player. He, so it's kind of three into two there, isn't it? And yeah. then that's without Goggin and Arnold. And then I think what what I like coming out over the summer, and I'm not inside or I don't have any um, moles in the camp who tell me what's going on, but I, I think that RLZ is kind of bucked up a bit in terms of... I'd say he's kind of said, I'm sick of chasing box kicks. I want ball in hand. Yeah. And he's probably the most um, dangerous back in Irish rugby with ball in his hand. Yeah, I'd like to see him in a more of a position out the, ba out the back of a, a yeah. hit line off Joey rather than waiting for the ball to get to his wing. Yeah, definitely. That's you know, where he's deadly. It's his kind him of with acceleration, yeah. isn't it? Which I think <coughs> he did it once the weekend difference. when he got, he put Goggin away with a little yeah. in and away. And like, like we've seen him trying to defend Earlsy when he was at 13, when I was at 13, was a nightmare. Like yeah. You, he's got three yards either side of you and he can go off either foot. No, you're right. And it's like that. And I think he's, he's missed that uh, that position in, in his game over the last few years. Yeah, he's it's just because he's so good in the wing probably. and Yeah, as a finisher probably they're looking at him out there. But yeah, I think if Munster want, like here's here's one for you. If Munster want to, to get to, okay, you don't, we don't want to be looking over our shoulder at Leinster, but if they want to be able to challenge them and beat them, do we need to go, like we've, over the last few years we've been going in one direction, it's like one-off runners and trying to batter our way through No, I, I, I think... The That's the way we have been playing. The previous management and the current management, I think, realise that they need a shift from that. Yeah. I think. Do you think we need to go in the opposite direction? No. To kind of meet in the middle? Well or? I, I just feel, and it's not a negative comment, but I think that's a game with work rate, with hunger, with desire that Munster are very good at, that works against three quarters of the team. Yeah. But you see when you're faced by a Leinster or a Saracens, mm -hmm. it just doesn't stand up. Mm -hmm. And there isn't really a different game that the boys have confidence in. So they need to have plan A, B and C. And I think, Ash, when you get to semi-final level, you need to be able to uh, Trust your your game plan, but also have the capacity to to rely on options B and C. Mm -hmm. But I suppose we looking back at Rob Penny, he went in a direction of playing a very expansive game, and I think we developed yeah. skills to play that. And then if you know when he left, it it kind of it was abandoned then for a while, so our skill level dropped off. I suppose my point is, if we go back to going in one direction, you know, trying to get the ball from one side of the field to the next, or playing an expansive game like the likes of Glasgow did a couple of years ago, the likes of Connacht have done it, that will almost... I always be a massive fan of, I think, the game that suits Munster is north-south. I just think that's... I think there's some very good carriers. I think, mm -hmm. obviously, uh, footwork could be an issue that could be addressed, potentially. Mm -hmm. um, playing the ball out of the tackle, there's a massive... I suppose love for the ruck because Ireland are the best rucking team in the world and they're so uh, accurate at ruck time that it filters from the national team down. But if, uh, I don't think if if the headmaster isn't there, I don't think the same um, rules are applied to how it's um, analysed at okay. uh, club, club level. level. Yeah. So there's a little bit of, I would say, probably looseness around that area. But I think... Um, I, I think it would be very different, Baz, with a with a full fifteen. Full 15. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, I'm excited to see it. I genuinely am. Mm -hmm. But I, I I feel that um, what makes a good player a great player these days is if because everything is pro so prescriptive. The guys that lift their head and see where the space is and have the balls to kind of it's not jumping ship or breaking rank, it's kind of, if they have 13 in the front line, what does that mean? They've won in the backfield. Yeah. So you have a, a full back in the middle of the pitch, which means there's 40 metre space to the right of them, 40 metre space to the left of them. Mm -hmm. So surely you've talked about that during the week in terms of if they're coming hard off the line, 
and putting insane pressure on our ball carriers. We have to identify there's been space here or here, but yeah. who's going after the ball and who's going after the tap back? Mm -hmm. Do you think Munster have the players at the moment that are making those decisions for a 10? Or was that something um, that you would have always done yourself? Or I know, you I, I like, you know, I think what really brings your point home is, uh, is talking the run, which Tapoki was a master of. Yeah. Like, I just learned so much from playing with him in terms of, you know what I mean, getting to who. What does getting to who mean? So for people that probably aren't rugby nerds or, or enjoy it as much as I do, so he'd basically on the run say, he'd point out a defender in the line and just say, get to him. Mm -hmm. And then at the last second, or fraction of a second, he'd just kind of go plus or minus. So if he wanted a plus, he'd beat your man on the outside shoulder. Wanted a minus. If, he, if he wanted a minus, he'd beat your man on the inside shoulder. I obviously had an incredible passing game, which we won't talk about today. But it's just, you know what I mean, people, commentators, anyone looking at it going, what a great pass. I'm kind of going, if only he knew. He knew that I've been told that he's going to be there. It's not yeah. that hard to pass yeah. the ball if you're being told, here, Raj. Right. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever Sorry, meet him? Ever meet Rua down yeah, in New Zealand? Yeah, I've in contact with him all the time. Yeah, he's... It's great when people, go, you know, I think sometimes when you're at home, you don't appreciate it. Yeah. I think but when you get out, it's kind of that grow from Munster just grows and Lefemi and Rua and uh, Trevor Halstead and Sean, yeah. uh, Jim, John Langford. I hope I'm not leaving out people like <coughs> Mikey Mullins. There's plenty of them. Yeah. I've met them all when I've been around Come for over. Super Rugby, but um, it's just that common bond, which is great. Yeah. I think we need a few more. Be able to bring the donkey sanctuary to New Zealand, we'll all go down Australia. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. it was, but that was a great strength to Munters, and I don't want it to dilute. I think they've always made quality signings. Yeah. But who bought into it? There's been a few, one or two dodgy ones that has diluted it. But yeah. like the great news during the week is that Conor Murray signs on. Mm -hmm. And I think as Munster people, that was hugely important. Yeah. Because the team was always built around local Limerick, Cork, Tip, Clare men. And yeah. if you dilute that, if they lose focus of that, yeah, it's not a good way to go. Well, hopefully we might see you back there to, at some point to uh, to keep uh, to keep up that tradition. Fingers crossed. People can't see my facial expressions, can they? Oh no, they <laughs> can't. It's a video, can. is it? Yeah, I well thought uh, it was the radio. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, there it is. There you have it. Someday he'll be back. Someday, please, God. Yeah, well, look, thanks a million for coming in. I really appreciate it, man. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll catch up for a beer. Absolutely. So, thanks, nice. Bess. Okay, that was Barry's first interview. Uh, he's not mucking about. Straight in the deep end, Ronan O'Gara. Um, no half measures, Barry? Yeah, that was a baptism of fire. Baptism? <laughs> <laughs> that was a yeah. baptism of fire, wasn't it? Yeah, Pat, ah. you're uh, obviously very well versed in interviews. As a professional like myself, yeah. Some, yeah, some feedback for Barry. It was. I was just saying that it was a monster heavy, but there was no harm in that at all. And uh, but yeah, what a great guy to have for for our first guest and a, a throwback to the hard yards as well, where where Rod used to be on as well. So it was a nice little bit of synergy there, which I liked. Um, but yeah, you guys got on well, and it's just great to see him doing doing the job. And as you said, he was that guy, they flogged that lad last week, and he's actually yeah. he's still coming yeah. out with fresh stuff as well, which yeah. is a great thing about when you talk to him. And That's the thing about Rog, he can stump you, man. He was the only one when you played that he would stump you with some wisdom or whatever. <laughs> he was like, he's so intense, but yeah, You stumped him though, Barry, at one stage. I Yeah, did you I? You could see um, something, about there was, um, you were talking about the 15 people around you, yeah. and then he made some point about the extended squad, and you said yes, but the game was very different back then. Yeah, and you can see wrong. he was like, oh, geez, <laughs> yeah, Barry's yeah. done a job on me here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it, I'll take it. Yeah. But anyway, welcome Pat McCarry, producer Pat. Proddy yes. Pat, we're going to call you for the, for the, for the duration. Proddy Pat, nice to have another Proddy on the show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as producer, yeah, that's what we, that's what we are, of I'm, course. Yeah, I'm a producer too, yeah. producer. and he's a Catholic. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, great to have you on the show. Um, yeah, any anything you'd uh, you'd like to pick up on what we've been talking about? Have we been talking shite, or are we uh, are we all right? There's a mixture. I like the I like <laughs> <laughs> so there's, there's a, a slurryish <laughs> mixture going on. But uh, I know I like to I like to talk about you not needing your your knees there at all against Aroni. And I said even though that was on the red button or the blue button, I must. This is my job now for the next couple of days. Try and find that moment where you yeah. did a Freddie Burns. <clears throat> 
You'll do well. You'll do find well. it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, hidden. It? Yeah. There's probably some hater out there, some Trimble hater out there who's got the footage. Like, <laughs> he's been compiling this for years. <laughs> this is what I'm this is what I'm doing with Virgil van Dijk at the moment. Yeah. Liverpool. Every well, mistake he makes, I'm putting it in a little file yeah. somewhere. Don't, I don't think you'll have to look far to find a couple of Trimble haters. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're Probably readily today. readily available. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I was at the... Um, we were looking up on Friday there. Actually, when Raj was in, he was saying to me, uh, oh, he's always slagging me for having a Leinster bias as well. And he was saying to me, uh, oh, I bet you're going to the Leinster game. Bet you're going to enjoy that. Like, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was telling him like, no, I'm going to the Munster game. Munster Gloucester next weekend's coming up. And he's like, yeah, I bet you are. I bet you are. <laughs> like, yeah. So, uh, but it was great to go along there. And such it was class there in the RDS on Friday night. And um, Good yeah. atmosphere. Oh, it was brilliant. Yeah. It was a sellout. And, um, oh, it, was, it looked like, like the Aviva last week was a lot of people chatting. Not yeah. a huge atmosphere, mm. but RDS looked like it was, yeah. it was bubbling a bit. Yeah, and it was kind of just like the... As you said there, just before the first half, they kind of knew if they could break them there. It's a thing that I saw, we were watching, I think most of us were watching the, the Bath-Toulouse game at the weekend. And um, yeah, you know, when they, I think Kano got himself sent off, or Sinbin for Toulouse, and Bath kicked it out of play. At the, at, and you could hear the commentators say, that's, you know, they're going to regroup and see how they're going to attack him. But Leinster and Ireland don't think that way. They're, that was their moment to put the hammer down on, on, on uh, Wasps then as well. And they got the try out of it as well. And... I thought, as you, you guys mentioned him as well, uh, Reese Ruddock I thought was brilliant, and then Sean Cronin too. Mm -hmm. um, they had a line out and they just kept it going, and they just it was I just said so much variety. It wasn't just they were doing mm. spreading it wide; they were doing everything, and um, so it's just great to see. And you knew the minute they got that score, they came out after the second half and got another score again, and all of a sudden the game was over, and they kept going till the end. And like I was talking to Leo Cullen at the end, and he, he mentioned Sean O'Brien coming on, and you know he didn't get the shout when when uh, Dan Levy got injured, but came off the bench, got a turnover, and you know they, they just yeah. Lenser just kind of kept the foot on the throat the whole way, and and then that was it, yeah. Like as you guys mentioned as well, James Lowe, like I think he had 184 meters gained in that game, and just an incredible player to watch, and uh, I I'd, I'd never had the pleasure of sitting down and listening to him talk, but I'd heard that he was you know quality, and we heard that a little bit earlier on when we was talking about. The car is, you know, like uh, his car being broken into. But he also had another nice thing to say there about uh, how the foreign players are being looked after, and they have a foreign group, and how they help them settle in, and they're off to to do something nice this weekend. So I think we can hear that now. You no, know, me and my girlfriend have really settled in. We're we're enjoying our time here. She's enjoying her job, um, and that's half of it. You get your life sorted off the field, and on the field becomes easy. So, uh, like I said, paint, paint and prosecco. I think this tomorrow. I don't know. What, I don't know the prosecco side, but. So I'll, back, I'll back my painting skills and I'll tell you on Monday how we go. Okay, I think we've got enough friends. Paint, was it painting? Like, yeah, were paint, they painting pictures or like paintball or what? What's going on? I first thought it was Decorating. paintball, but yeah, paintball and prosecco would be class, though, wouldn't <laughs> it? <right? laughs> what I think they're doing, which is just all going, you know, getting painting lessons and sipping prosecco at the same time. But right. you were oh, that's so D four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. so that's what you're D4, saying. You, you can't geez. find a reason to hate Leinster, but you've you've found one. That's one. Yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. What would be the equivalent in in Belfast now? In Belfast, yeah, of painting and prosecco. Ah, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> you can't There's draw nothing like yeah. yeah. <laughs> Book fast and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, lads, don't be derogatory about <laughs> fast. Yeah. That's actually a good place to go. Um, the because we haven't covered them yet, but yeah, um, the Ulster game. Both you boys had, had watched it over the weekend, and um, John Cooney is a guy who played well again. And I think you you mentioned before that John Cooney is a lad who's who backs himself, isn't he? Yeah, he's uh, he was a, a very unique character at at the start whenever he came in and we didn't know him we kind of didn't really know what not what to expect and we sort of probably expected uh, this cocky Leinster young fella and then he came in and uh, obviously Ruin Pinar had just left and uh, John Cooney came in big shoes to fill and we thought that this guy would be nervous you know about taking Ruin Pinar's place and he introduced himself to the squad and he said first of all I would like to say um, sorry for the passing of Ruan. <laughs> 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 and we were like, how dare <laughs> you? <laughs> but, yeah, but then, um, actually, it, the joke didn't really land because just the accent, he kind of mumbled a little bit. And a couple oh. of guys thought that he meant the passing, <laughs> like the poor passing. <laughs> Right. As in, not that he died. So the the the, di the Ruan dying joke is funny. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then we kind of realized this guy's actually hilarious, and he's a great lad, and he settled in really well. Mm. So 
Yeah, he's, he's a, awesome. Yeah, he's he awesome is. He's uh, very popular up there. Is he? The yeah. boys are loving him, kind of supporters as well. And uh, he's settled in really well and done a good job. So, Yeah, I was very impressed with Lowry as well. Um, just like I love the, f the way that Leicester tried to focus on mm. and, and, you know, targeting with a few high balls. And he dropped the first one, which was a tough one to take, and then took the, the next few. But just his, uh, his footwork, his speed, his attitude. I mean, when he started coming into himself, I felt <coughs> he lifted the rest of the team because it just adds another dynamic. I've been in teams like that when someone like can come out of nowhere and, and you maybe be a little bit worried about him and then they do something outrageous that you, no one expects mm. and the whole team gets a boost off it. And uh, yeah, it's just so exciting to see guys like that and young, smaller guys that are using their pace and obviously have developed a way of uh, using their size and their speed uh, to their advantage. Yeah. Uh, I love seeing that. And Addison as well, I thought was uh, was very, very impressive. And I just thought it was a good win. Jeez, they they uh, they played a lot of rugby, used the weather well in the first half and didn't kick a lot of ball. And yeah. So and you're a big uh, you're a big Mike Laurie fan then? Yeah. As, as a fellow little man, you're, you're, you're yeah. glad to see the little men do well. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, well I, I was light, I suppose. I'm, not, I'm, I'm tall and long armed. Yeah, no, but I was quite I, light. I meant no offense. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we can't all be huge, awkward lumps, like, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think, uh, I think there's, uh, there's, especially with the new rules that are coming in, like you saw at the weekend, I think Kano getting pulled for that yellow card yeah. um, with that. Uh, high tackle, which I thought was fair enough. Like I've, I've mm. seen the, I spoke to Johnny Lacey, the referee, last week, and uh, he sent me on some things that the refs are pulling teams for at the moment. And it, one of them is an upright tackler who's you know making cl you know shoulder collision with someone's head or chin or whatever, and and it's straight red card is what they're looking for. So I, I actually think Kano got away with it. Not only was he was it a yellow card, but it, it could have been a it could have been a red. Um, and just seeing those that aim is to potentially bring the, the tackle height below the chest or below the nipple even they're saying that you could see a lot of these younger these smaller players like the Shane Williams of, of our time and <coughs> uh, Brenton Pawson and those kind of guys. Shane Williams is your era I mean I kind of <laughs> <laughs> I'm only just retired. Just, sorry of course <laughs> of course uh, but yeah do you remember coming up against Shane Williams like Jesus Christ like he'd he'd get the ball in a normal phase and you'd be like I gotta watch myself, but then if it was like the ball was dribbling along the ground, or if it was broken play, he'd get it, and the whole place would be like, "Oh fuck, <laughs> what's he gonna do? What's he gonna do?" It's like you know, he he'd, he just had that ability to yeah. to, and he because he developed from a young age how to use his speed and how to use space and manipulate space, and I think we've missed that in international rugby and and yeah. professional rugby for the last few years, and and I think that tackle rule will will allow a lot of that and. Hopefully, encourage smaller players to yeah. you know to get like you saw for uh, Toulouse on Saturday. Uh, Colby, uh, yeah, Colby, like yeah. his footwork, yes. man, absolutely. Yeah. And he's a tough guy. Like and Shane Williams was a was a very tough guy as well. I think yeah. we, we'll all agree. So that's the thing is if if that's the way the game's going to go, and uh, there's going to be a role for young or uh, smaller fellas, mm -hmm. then you have to be as talented as Shane Williams. You have to be as talented as potentially Michael Laurie. Mm -hmm. You know these young fellas. To make up for that elsewhere, if you're not going to have that physicality, <coughs> you've got to bring an X factor to the game. Exactly. And as you said, it was nice to see a yeah. young fellow, Mike Lord. I think he was getting there was a lot of chat. All the chat before the game was about him. Wet night, Leicester. It was the perfect storm. Yeah. <laughs> and and sure enough, they came. They did exa Leicester did exactly what we thought they were going to do. Put a few high balls on him for early on. Drop the first one, and you're going. We are really going to find out what he's made of here. Mm. And he's obviously pretty, pretty switched on yeah. upstairs as well. He's pretty mentally tough because he then he thrives the rest of the game. So yeah. good to see. Yeah. You were mentioning the the Kano one there, and it was actually interesting. The, the thing you you shared after speaking to John Lacey, the the things that they're looking out for. But I was very interested in this ladder of destiny. That's that's part of it as well. Yeah, but yeah. It's something that yeah we must share. Very dramatic, even. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah the seriousness of what you've done and the end results as well, and this ladder of destiny going here. But it's something yeah we must even share on sports show as well. But the other one, I, I, the big decision over the weekend, and I, I kind of put out a clip of it on, on my Twitter account at the weekend, and it was the Andrew Conway thing on Garrett Steenson with his lovely yeah. new beard um, as he was taking his conversion. And uh, just it was almost just like, it's such a funny clip because you just see Steenson takes the kick, full second goes by, and then there's like a macho man elbow drop comes in from from nowhere like and with a um, chair WWF. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> Conway coming from the ladder, like, you know, like, yeah. but... Uh, I was amazed to kind of see see him kind of, and then of course gets up, you know, arms raised, you know, sorry about that, and 
Uh, it was, maybe it was just because it was half time he got away with it and, and the crowd, a lot of the crowd missed it as well, but such a funny incident. It wasn't was it? bizarre. It w and I, like, I think in, in Andrew's defence, he's not that kind of player. He's not a, he's not a dirty player or anything like that. And if you look at it, he's, he's completely looking at the ball. Um, and then Steenson is obviously the angle he's coming from. He's, it's not like he has the ball in his hands. Mm. So Steenson's over to the right and Conway's just staring at the ball. And all he wants to do is get hype in the air. So it is a weird, when you think of it like that, it's quite weird and, and, he, and he does come down on the high with the elbow, but it's, I think it was just a, a very random thing to happen. But he, and I think the referee, fair play to him, realised that Steenson was actually grand and he got up and he, and he was fine once he kind of played a little, played a little bit that he, was, uh, that he was hurt, but I don't think he was. So yeah, bizarre, but uh, I think the ref did well. Mm. You know what I mean? I was kind of wondering, have you guys ever done that? Have you ever sprinted from the line one of those moments like, let's go charge this down and you've realised you're the only one out there on your own. Like, has that ever happened to you before? Uh, no, but I've um, <laughs> gone to charge down a penalty kick. <laughs> 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 so stupid. Of course you have. <laughs> so, at the time I thought it was, a, it was, it was a conversion or something. I just, I don't know, I just went autopilot. I just started, it was in New Zealand on tour. Oh, yeah, I was a youngster. And what happened? Um, the ref just looked at me. He, it didn't matter. I didn't get anywhere near it, and he got the conversion anyway. Uh, but he looked at me. <laughs> what, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> are you a professional? So eager. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love rugby. <laughs> Love charging down kicks. Anyway, I got fined and done again. Done again, Callan. Yeah, uh, fined me on the bus class. the next day for being absolutely sick. That's brilliant. Anyway, that's another one for the file, isn't it? That's yeah. Just, yeah, the haters file. Yeah. yeah, the haters file. Yeah. But, but the the uh, the monster game itself. You like yeah. you guys are watching that as well, and. Um, just to, like they'll be happy with that. Like I know they haven't won away from home yet this season, but to surely be happy with that, wouldn't they? Like getting the yeah, um, couple I of points. I think all the talk beforehand was how how difficult it was going to be for Munster to go to Exeter and get a result. And uh, granted, Exeter great side, it's a tough place to go. But uh, I think uh, you know, right off Munster at your peril, like and and, and that side and what they can achieve. And uh, I think they should have won the game. And I think that's the way they look at it. Um, they they. The control, the tempo, the intensity, it was all on their terms for a lot of the game. And that's such a hard thing to do, but it just shows the experience that they're at. And they're, you know, they're still missing some of their best players. Like Earlsey pulling out at the last minute was uh, that's a huge mm -hmm. blow to them. You know, he's playing some of his best rugby at the moment. Obviously, Connor be missing and, uh, and Farrell and having a, you know, they've got young pairings all over the pitch, you know, with big, big important pairings. Like halfbacks are huge for any team. And we've got, you know, inexperienced, combination there we've been experienced centers there um and for them to go out and take control of a team like that that are you know leading the premiership i think they'll they'll be very happy with how they control the game but it's europe isn't it isn't that what monster do though yeah they just you know rewind a few weeks ago and they're getting hammered in in cardiff mm -hmm. a couple of weeks before that they're getting hammered in glasgow now they've had a few big performances at home yeah but then it's it's been head and shoulders way better than any other uh, away performance this season and it's Europe they just get to that European stage and then they just say right lads time to turn up yeah and they're they're just unbelievable in Europe and as you say the tendency is not to write them off but just think oh maybe this monster side you know isn't quite up there to mix it with the Leinsters and the Saracens but they're right up there now absolutely and I think once once uh once these guys start getting more confidence you know I think we, we they rely heavily on the the basics that you saw at the weekend like the the scrum the line out the mall really solid defense was awesome uh, intensity was good but then you know when we get into the green zone there say we it's hard not to we must get into the green zone and they get into more of attacking position sometimes they take the foot off the pedal a little bit in terms of uh, how expansive they're willing to play and uh, I think that will come with time once they grow a confidence and uh, this this competition and the Pro 14 uh, evolves. And the point I was trying to make to Raj, I suppose, earlier on in the interview was um, when I said they should, could they potentially go in, you know, in more of an expansive direction to meet in the middle because they've got a really solid foundation at the moment. They're a really hard team to beat. Um, they do the, the fundamentals really well but they lack a little bit of X factor at times and they have the players to do it. You know, I know we've, they're young guys, but like Dan Goggin has ridiculous skills. Um, Earlsey, Carberry, Conway, Farrell, like some really talented players. And, 
you know, in the Pro 14, when these guys play lesser games, should they be given the chance to, you know, show off a little bit more yeah. and play a little bit more of an expansive game? So when it comes to crunch games in this championship, that they can they can pull out the goods. Yeah, well, Rog, Rog um, touched on that, didn't he? He said, you know, this this Munster side will will always be at their best when they're whenever they're north south. Mm -hmm. And as a future Munster coach, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> as he said, <laughs> yeah, uh, you would imagine um, kind of if that's what he's got in his head. And there's probably a, a bit of a romantic notion for that as well. You know, Rog, Rog and yourself are kind of taking trips down memory lane and kind of talking about the old lads and the way it used yeah. to be. And you know, the way it used to be, you go down to Thornton Park and you get the squeeze put on you. And it's hard to get away from how successful that was. Yeah, so yeah, uh, it's good. Like it's. Um, <coughs> And it'll be interesting to see how they go for the rest of the season, but I think we've done a good job of rounding up most things there over the weekend. Um, Talon and Leon lost to the way, that's a, you know, big shock results there as well, but I think we've done, done a good job there, and I'm, I'm very proud of the two years Thanks as well now. Thanks very much, man, yeah. <laughs> we did it. I'm we a father did it. High <laughs> <laughs> five. It's will you have us back? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll have you back. And then we'll move on now, yes, to um, Ask HO or Ask House of Rugby, and um, we put the, the tweet sure. out there last night, and just looking for feedback questions over the weekend mm. and uh, got a great response on, on the, the, the House of Rugby Twitter account and you guys had both put out the old Wayne and Gert, uh, you know, gifts as well, like, and you got great responses there as well. So uh, I think, Barry, yeah, you, you maybe get the first one and thanks everybody for sending that in as well and keep that up over the course of the season and I won't have to do any research for anything <laughs> at all. <laughs> uh, so Mark Moorhead asks Andrew, uh. who are the standout future Ulster players? I'm thinking of two Lowry Curtis. Those are the those are the three. <laughs> also the three. <laughs> I'm thinking of as well. That's like in in school whenever someone asks a question that they know the answer to. Yeah. They say, what, is it this? And you're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the end of that. <laughs> yeah. Tommy O'Toole's gone really well at the start of the season, uh, especially in the loose. He's been throwing his weight around a bit. Uh, Mike Glory stood up the big test of the weekend. Um, Angus Curtis, Angus Kernahan. Mm. Uh, Curtis especially looks like uh, a young kind of Paddy Wallace, you know, kind of a lot more physical than he looks. Um, quite punchy, quite dynamic. Um, good skill set, good footwork. Uh, Angus Kernahan is another one. Um, again, a guy who kind of potentially could have slipped through the net. He was in the sub academy um, at the start of the summer and then he got a couple of um, games in the friendlies, did really well. And now he's up, you know, he's the, the dizzy heights of an academy contract. Yeah. What are you laughing at? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> That's right, we'll come back to it. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it off air, I think. Exactly, well, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> question two. Realistically, how many teams can beat Leinster? Munster struggled in the Aviva. Saracens looked only okay today. Racing, is this? That's what we said yesterday, yeah. Because they, they had just struggled to that 13-3 win over Glasgow, I think. Yeah. Saracens, so... Um, yeah, you're saying. I think he's just kind of saying, who are the who are the only teams that can really push Leinster? Because a lot of teams are fearing already. Yeah. So Creelan was just kind of saying he thinks Exeter, Munster, Saracens, and maybe Racing are the only teams that can give Leinster a proper rattle in Europe. That's probably fair enough. Um, you know, th it's going to take a lot to beat them for sure. But you know, I think Munster showed last weekend that that you know there's very little between the two sides uh, in the Aviva last week. A uh, couple of referee decisions and and so on but I think you know it, it'll, it'll take a lot Rassing obviously pushed them very very close last year in the in the final um, Saris did look pretty strong at the weekend um, and we know what they can do they're experienced in this competition as well so uh, and you know as we said Leinster aren't going to take any of this lightly they're not they're, they're really out to, to win this trophy again they're mm. not even trying to defend it I, I think just here and there the way they're talking about it is uh, they want to win it from scratch with a new you know a a new uh, batch of players and yeah it's going to be a, a tough one but um, we'll see the next one and I was delighted to get this in because um, Connacht got the win over Bordeaux at the weekend and Kyle Godwin got a, a couple of tries from him as well but this is from Nathan Mangan sent us into us and he has said Andy Friend is clearly uh, he's got a great effect at Connacht with their resurgence like Delan actually yeah, he was doing really well Keen Kelleher and Tiernan O'Halloran putting in a strong statement for these guys are basically, Nathan's saying these guys sh should be in the mix for November. So he's saying, out of all these Connacht guys, they've started the season off decent. Do you think any of them deserve a chance to get back into the mix for Ireland in November? Yeah, I think, uh, well, ju just kind of that performance up in, uh, in Ulster was pretty impressive mm. by a lot of those fellas. Um, based on the backbone of really, really uh, 
kind of physical defence. Um, Tom Farrell's thrown his weight around, yeah, Bundy yeah. Key thrown his weight around. Uh, and Tom Farrell, I don't think, gets the recognition he kind of no, deserves, yeah. really. Uh, Tiernan, recently, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Sean O'Brien, I thought, is going really well at the minute. Obviously, there's no space in the back row. Yeah, yeah. There's so much competition. Um, so I don't know if he'll get any joy there, but I thought he was really good that night, especially, anyway. He's a big unit, isn't he? Yeah. Big, um, yeah. You know, lurch, kind of with red hair. like. Yeah, he. I got in trouble, actually, that night on uh, on, on Premier Sports. I, it was at half time, they said he's made. 17 tackles and that was all the chat 17 tackles and then um maybe about six seven eight minutes in the second half i kind of thought i kind of thought oh, he's made around about three or four tackles right right so i just quoted the stat i just went <laughs> you know uh he's uh you know that's his 21st tackle right yeah. so then they started talking the, the production team and all were saying that's 21 tackles after 48 minutes <laughs> and then the girl who was interviewing uh, someone after the game, you made 21 tackles after uh, 48 minutes, and then they asked me afterwards, and I went, This has got out of hand. <laughs> I made that up. <laughs> I'm, I made that up. It was, I just said 21. <laughs> Don't quote me on it, lad. <laughs> so I wonder why they thought I was sourcing my information. Yeah, from. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. You just had your little notebook out counting the tackles that he yeah. made, but this this wasn't the first time you'd stepped in it there. Right? You'd pissed off Jordan Murphy then as yes. well, hadn't you? I did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was, I kind of bad time as well because I was doing the radio at the weekend and then he did a uh, pre-match uh, interview and he said you know we've heard the comments of Andrew Trimble through the <laughs> week and it's provided us with a bit of inspiration <laughs> I went oh no because it was it was just it needed to be put in context what I said you know you could, you could create a one-liner and I'm sure it was clickbait and I doubt Jordy listened to the full anyway I, w- I was put it up in the dressing room. Exactly. Like, yeah. yeah. Here's the bad guy. Yeah. It's Andrew. But he's down. not playing anymore. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, and then I had this moment. I was like, did I get really defensive and going to no what I was saying was and anyway, I just stuff it. You basically called give Leicester Tigers a walkover, didn't yeah, you? Did, yeah, yeah, more or less, yeah. yeah. I was making the point that um in 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 Ulster's pool, they've got Saracens and Rassing and Leicester, and it's weird that at this stage there's so much competition in this, uh, in in uh, in Europe and in that pool in particular, that strangely uh, a, a European heavy unit like Leicester coming to Ravenhill, coming to Kingspan, is probably the easiest it's fixture, games, even yeah. though it's not easy. So anyway, that was the one liner. Oh, this yeah. is Ulster's easiest <laughs> game. Anyway, carnage. Foolish. I better give him a shout. Yeah. <laughs> <too much. laughs> Perfect. Uh, that's good. I think we've covered them all there, and uh, hopefully, as I said, we'll get to more of them, and uh, we might even answer a couple on Instagram or something if we haven't got to them afterwards, and do something like that. To just because the the wealth of of stuff that we got in from people there was brilliant. So if they can keep that up over the season, it'd be great. So perfect for that. And you can hit your outro now. My outro. Yeah, have you brought your guitar with you? <laughs> <laughs> Wayne's world. Wayne's world. No, it's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah. Uh, thank you all for listening, for tuning in, uh, for watching on YouTube and and all the rest. So we'll. Uh, Enjoy the rugby next weekend, and we'll be back next week to, to take you through everything that's gone on. But before we let you go, this is almost like the episode two teaser that they'd put up on Netflix or something. We've got a little, the boys over in, uh, there's going to be House of Rugby UK, and we've got a little teaser of what's coming up there. Their first episode is out on Wednesday, so have a listen to this. Hi, I'm James Haskell. Join me next Wednesday for a new show on Joe, House of Rugby. We go inside the changing room, in the malls, in the rucks. News, analysis and lots and lots of my unbelievable chat. Okay, it's terrible, but it'll be lots of me. The House of Rugby on Joe. Together with Guinness. It's been a pleasure. Uh, Thanks to everyone who's uh, behind the scenes in the show. Thanks to Pat for coming on and keeping us in order. Uh, Thank you for everyone for tuning in and to our sponsors, Guinness. And yeah, we'll see you back here next week to round up all the rugby for next weekend.